Ray, I think a few years ago we did talk about we talked about the NAD the NADH ratio, which reflects the reduction in oxidation balance. And uh, I, maybe I was reading a paper by Veach, and he stated that he thought um, the NADH should be higher relative to the NAD. And so that's like, is that a that's a more common belief in maybe academia that uh, it, the reduction should be higher than? So you're so you're you're expressing oh, maybe oh, a. a it, 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 it's like ninety nine to to one out of a hundred. <laughs> a very confused attitude towards NADH, where it should be seven or 800 to, to each NADH, the oxidized form should be extreme. When you're under stress, it gets down more like two or 300 to one. Since NAD is so popular now with those NAD drips and stuff, are people trying to pretend they, like they never held that? those beliefs before? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, the, a lot of them don't don't know about it, but uh, uh, they uh, think uh, they're uh, raising their NADH, and uh, lots of places are selling uh, the reduced form of NADH as being better because it's reduced. Uh, the, the same with uh, ubiquinone and ubiquinol. Uh, they, they say the quinol is better because it's reduced. And and, it, and Georgie told me this, and I found it in a few papers, but the, N, the higher NADH uh, is one of the signals to turn off the pyruvate dehydrogenase. And that's like uh, some like ketosis advocates that write papers, like one of his names, like Jeff Volek. He talks about how that, that's a consequence of ketosis. Like what what's the problem if uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase is turned off? Like, does it matter? Oh, um, yeah, that makes the whole cell uh, uh, shift in that direction. Once it starts with the excess uh, reducing uh, uh, environment, uh, that uh, tends to rein reinforce it and make it get worse and worse. And, and sometimes... Well, if you turn off part of the dehydrogenase, as we just mentioned, you're starting to immediately build up lactate because pyruvate will be used as the emergency oxidant. So you're going to start building up lactate. And we just said that I don't know if there's any circumstance where you would want elevated lactate just because it's so deranging to the entire cell. Um, yeah, and to keep the production of, of lactate going, uh, you need something to get rid of the buildup of the higher and higher levels of NADH. And... Uh, uh, the uh, intrinsic uh, alternative to oxygen uh, is the synthesis uh, of fats, uh, and yeah. so when when the cell gets uh, uh, convinced that it uh, uh, isn't isn't going to get enough oxygen, then it starts synthesizing fatty acids like crazy, uh, estrogen. Uh, and and other stressors uh, uh, will turn on this this enzyme system uh, to consume uh, excess NADH uh, 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 in in the absence of of oxygen, and so it it runs uh, glycolysis, lactic acid production, uh, intrinsically uh, changing the, the cell over to a. a, a uh, consuming energy at a high rate, but in, in a dis destructive, uh, primitivizing uh, direction. So sometimes they'll say, well, well, you know, fatty acids bypass glycolysis and uh, they form through the activation, the acetyl-CoA. And so that's good to skip glycolysis and go directly to the mitochondria. What is there? A, what's the faulty thinking what, with that argument? Uh, uh, that's going to deprive you of carbon dioxide production r relative to what you could have with uh, oxidizing uh, 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 glucose. And, and then the, the the oxygen supply is the, kind of the critic, like because we can consume our tissues to produce glucose, the real bottleneck of everything is the oxygen supply and things like lipid peroxidation and the lack of carbon dioxide, those are interfering and estrogen are interfering with our oxygen supply. Uh, yeah. 